boom hey what's up docs so today it's hotter than blazes already and i'm doing one of my least favorite chores um but it means a lot to vicky so i'm going to try and do it and i'm choosing my attitude today uh I don't even know what that says awesome meter yeah i'm feeling awesome i love this shirt never wear it in public but i love this shirt anyway welcome back i'm glad you're here um today uh let me see if i can't focus on this we've got this thing this pond in the front yard and uh that tarp i got out there because i'm getting ready to do some work here um and i hate this job every year this task because i've got to reclaim this from the winter and this thing just fills up with unbelievable black sludge and leaves and i'm surprised we're not seeing any oh there he is do you see this guy you see that guy what's up buddy what's oh hope you got a piece of that before he jumped away ah <laughs> uh, there he is again see him Anyway, I don't think it's the same frog, but last year when we came out here to do it, Chance, I hope you know what you're doing there. Um, last year when I came out to clean this thing, uh, the frog, there was a frog in here and he was black. Now, I was reading about this term and I should have researched it, but about uh, animals that aren't otherwise uh, dark in color that are dark complected and it's a it's a very rare um, Phenomenon, I'll see if I can find it out more about it, but last year when we were cleaning this thing out we had a um, uh, A big old frog it was twice the size of that and he was black He was super dark and I don't know whether he got like stained by the water in there over time or if he was one of those rare cases but um unfortunately i didn't kill him but i moved him away when we were emptying this down by the river uh thinking he would you know have a better life and um vicky was mad at me because she really liked having him in here so i'm gonna not move this guy unless he chooses to leave all right so Here's a little bit of an update. Our frog is still here. Uh, he popped his head up a minute ago um, and then he went back under. So, so far so good. I, when I, after I drugged this, I walked off and checked the mail and look what we got. Yes, yes, look at this. We've got two, um, two of these books. Uh, I've been talking about this forever, but I give these away so often that I didn't have any. And now I'm having a hard time finding them. So if you find these, get a hold of them. This is, this is, this book saved me big time. The story I told about Dr. Smith, my personal doctor, when my mother told me she thought I had uh, depression or whatever. Um, Dr. David Burns, feeling good, the new mood therapy. This changed my life. Uh, it kept me off medication and it allowed me to put things in perspective. Again, comparison is the thief of joy. Perspective is the gift of awareness. A lot of the things I talk about, including this right now, uh, probably came directly from this book. But a lot of the points that I make about, you know, getting, you know, getting uh, comfortable with, you make difficult choices uh, but if you realize they're a choice, you're not a victim. You've heard me say that several times on here. It came from this book. I'm happy to have this. If you notice, I have two copies, and uh, I'm going to look for somebody to give one away to. This one's new. This one's used. I'll keep the used one and give away the new one, but I think I have a couple of more that are coming, and uh, it's weird. Sometimes I can't find them online, and other times I do, so I'm going to start buying these when I find them, and... Uh, Good stuff here. But let me tell you something about social media. It ain't real. When I go on something like Facebook, 
it, it was so depressing for me because I would go on there and get in these fights about politics and things, things I didn't really even care about, but I felt like I had to like defend what, my honor or some political view, and I don't do that anymore. And the other thing is all these other people are showing the very best of their life. And if you're stuck or shut in with obligations and not getting out to see the world um, as much as other people, it can give you a very jaded view of life. And you think everybody's got a perfect life and you're an outlier and your life is in shambles. That's, that's crap. Uh, I've, I, I've spent time with some really wealthy people that are miserable and I've spent time with people that are just getting by that are just happy as they can be. Uh, so it's like an awesome meter. You gotta choose your attitude, but don't let anybody else give you or suggest what your attitude should be. Who cares what great things they put forth on Facebook and the like. Um, I've made it a point now uh, to, here, here's a life hack for you. This is what I do with Facebook. I don't get into any debates or discussions. I simply go on there and I post something positive. Not to try and mislead people, but if something happened to me that I'm happy about or was positive, I post that because in Facebook memories, that's what I'm gonna get. I used to get Facebook memories of a stupid argument that I had with somebody I didn't even know about something I didn't care about. Not anymore. So that's a life hack for me. Here's our frog. Ah, I missed him. He's still in here. This is one of the reasons I can't stand this job. Sooner or later, it just comes down to getting, getting dirty. <laughs> I got him. He's, again, he's nothing like the one we had last year. This guy's small, but he's been man he's managed to stay here throughout the work so far, so I want to give him a chance to remain. Whoa, there you go, buddy. Look out for me, I'll try and look out for you. Babe, you gonna make a cameo in this video since you're making me do this? Yeah, you know, like a walk on, like a wave. See, that's the other thing about social media and trying to impress people. I tried to impress Vicky about having a pond in my front yard when it looked like this. So then when she wanted to come see it, I had to make it, I had to fix it. So now I'm stuck fixing it every year because it was kind of like a promise. You know, I lied to her and I got to cover my lie every year. <laughs> right, babe? Yeah, just walk away. Go ahead, walk away. <laughs> She's not impressed. You know, I thought of an analogy, and I don't know if I dare even say it, because I'm not comparing anybody to a frog or to chance, but, you know, we all have a different journey and a different path. My path, my personal caregiver path, was growing up in a house with uh, mental illness, my dad, and at a very young age, I had to try and take care of him and my family. And then I later, uh, back when it wasn't in vogue, I chose a career in nursing. So, you know, I don't know, was that nature, was that nurture? But bottom line, that's my path. So here's the path I wanna stay on right now. I know I'm using common household chores uh, and my dog, and in this case, a frog to make a point, but don't get too caught up in that. Get the perspective rather than the comparison. The, the point is, I'm, imp I'm improving this, right? Well, not in the eyes of the frog, <laughs> he left. Uh, so I've talked several times about the biggest lie caregivers tell is I'm fine and don't wait for them to ask because they'll never ask. So I'm trying to tell caregivers to be in a mindset to say yes when people offer, but I also want everybody else to not wait. See, the caregiver dilemma here is that the caregivers are perceived as strong by everybody else and capable when they really need help. So people think, oh, they got it, I'm not gonna help them. But when you do help or you do get that opportunity to help, try and respect boundaries because while you're improving things, you're taking away comfort and routine from the person you're trying to help. So here I'm improving this environment and the person that lived here left. Um, he's right over there now. Hopefully he'll come back because I'm gonna get out of here soon.
All right, so I think it's time for me to show you the sort of end result because I feel myself about to give up on this. But so I got defeated again by this daggone uh, thing. So we're we got her going, sort of. There was a uh, in the middle. I had a fountain type thing. Gave it an A for effort. I feel like I uh, am fulfilling my, uh, where am I? <laughs> I feel like I'm fulfilling my husbandly duties uh, and, f and keeping my promise, but I'm gonna have to mess with this thing again later. It's either spouting way too much and emptying it or it's just trickling. So right now we'll take trickling. Hopefully our friend will come back, but in the meantime, Thank you for caring. In everything you do, think also of you. Honor yourself as you care for others. Thank you for caring. I don't know if I dare make this analogy, but in one of the earlier videos, I talked about helping caregivers, but respecting boundaries at the same time. Remember, while you think you're improving something for others, you're taking away their comfort and familiarity. Yes, I guess I just indirectly compared people to a frog. But you get the point. He's doing this on his choice. Hopefully he'll come back.